All right, hey, what's up, guys? Coach Mac, play fast football. We're going to do a video today on uh, dealing with the bare front. If you coach at the high school level, junior high level, Pop Warner youth level, at some point you're going to have to understand how to deal with the bare front. Obviously, it's going to be prevalent in NFL and college football, but at the lower levels, I think it's even more prevalent and, and um, something that is even more troublesome for offenses because when they cover up that center and then they decide to go with those shades on the guards and put extra guys in the box, unless you have a really dominant O-line, really tends to give a lot of offensive trouble. So we're going to talk about handling the bare front and in your offense, or at least in our two-back offense, the options we kind of have to kind of get it figured out to how we can get some good plays against the bare front. Make sure you check out our sponsors. All right, we got Just Play Football, which is the uh, digital diagram software tool I use. It's the only tool I use to diagram plays. Uh, if you... Uh, if I'm going to be doing a webinar on my website or if I'm going to be speaking at any clinics, I'm always going to use Just Play for their, uh, for their diagram tools. It's the only diagram tool I'm going to use, so check them out, Just Play Football. Make sure you check out GameStrat. In the, in the uh, description box below, all right, I will have a direct link down in the description box. I will have a link to their website. You can click right on that link and get to their website. Uh, number one uh, choice for coaches. Looking for the most reliable, most affordable sideline replay system. We've had it the last two years. I absolutely love it. Great customer service. They're doing some really good things. Need to check out Game Strat. All right, Difference USA, which is the ultimate striking machine. We have one in our weight room. It attaches right to your racks in your weight room, or it attaches with a universal attachment to your equipment on the field. You don't need a partner. You don't need a med ball. You don't need a pad. You don't need a bag. You don't need somebody holding a bag. All you need is an attachment, and that, all right, and that, um, pad and the left pin that goes in it's got different coils different strengths on the left pin it's set up just like a torso with short arms to it all right you come out uh elbows in thumbs up and you get hand placement work on striking work on how to keep the elbows in the strike how to strike violently as you get stronger and your kids get older you change the tension on the cord so it makes it harder to lev in so you're working on all those things without needing a partner uh without needing somebody to hold a bag and you can do it all in the off season, it's totally legal. You can do it in your weight room or out on the field. So make sure you check out uh, Difference USA. DC1, which is an app, all right, Defensive Coordinator 1, which is an in-game app that allows you to make uh, critical in-game adjustments based on live in-game data. you got somebody up in the booth. They're charting the game in the DC1 app. You've got tendencies and scout sheets and things already built out. They start putting the live data of the calls in there, and now you're able to take uh, what you thought you were getting with what you're actually getting, match it up with the calls that you made, and now all of a sudden you've got calls you've made against things they've run, results, you can start looking and say, hey, that blitz was good, that blitz wasn't, this coverage is good, this coverage isn't, this front is working, this front isn't, this is good to one back, this isn't, this is good to two back, this isn't. Instead of guessing and kind of feeling what's right or what's wrong, you can always go and get the actual in-game data to make your adjustments. If you're like me, or you've been coaching for a long time, I know you've been in a situation before where after a game you said, why didn't I do that more? Or when I was in two back, I should have ran this. Or when I, when they got into empty, I should have done this. Well, if you do it with DC1 and you, and you do it, you can now go back and look and go, hey, coach, you know, when, you, when they ran empty and we did this, they had a hard time. Well, let's go back to doing more of this and less of that. All right, so you can make those critical in-game adjustments and you can make them off live. Uh, in-game real-time data that's actually occurring in that game. And then, as always, Dome Hats, which is a major sponsor of Play Fast Football. Here's one of our OP swords up. Uh, Dome Hats, and they'll be a major sponsor of our clinic coming up in January on the 24th, 25th, 26th at the Embassy Suites in St. Augustine. Uh, Dome is a local company here in Jacksonville founded by two former Florida Gator football players. They understand what we go through. All right, They coach at the youth level. They have kids. They've coached before at the high school level. They know what we go through. They want to help coaches out. Every hat has a story. Don't want to find out what's behind your story for your hat. Check out their custom online hat builder. Generate the hat any way you want, which is how I was able to customize and generate all right, my OP hat. Um, different panels can be different colors. Your logos, obviously, you can make, all right, you can make uh, the top of the bill one cover, the bottom. You could sandwich it. You can do whatever you want, so check out. Uh, the custom online hat builder, check out Dome Hats. All right, so today we're going to look at dealing with bare fronts, all right, how to handle bare fronts. We see a lot of, uh, of bare fronts, and one of the reasons we do is because we are a little bit um, 
under talented at the O line position this year. All right, and the last two years we have been a little bit um, under talented at the center position. So when teams get enough film on you throughout the year, they start to find out what gives you trouble, and then they start to find out where they can take advantage of some things. For us, the last two years, last year it was a 180-pound uh, center that teams started to put big physical nose guards on and just started to walk him into the backfield. Then you got to demand double teams from your guards on some of your gap schemes or your other schemes. Um, this year we've had some injuries and we've played three different centers. And then uh, all the centers that we have this year, none of them have started for us before, so they were all first-time starters either coming from JV or other places. So we see a lot of bare front, especially when we are – Spread two back because they can get seven in the box, play man free, and then depending on your ability to throw the ball, your ability to protect the quarterback, all right, they can play some man free stuff with seven in the box and get an extra defender in the box, all right? So I feel like as a defensive guy, bear free becomes, or bear, even if they're playing it as a voided out three deep concept, dropping a guy, however they're doing it, the bear front to me is kind of risk reward, all right? When you're doing it and it's working and the other team has no answers, it's really good. Once the other team has a couple answers, you can get you know, your ass ripped to shreds in a bare front, especially with off-tackle runs, option game. There's a lot of things that, that can get you in trouble. But if you can't beat those things, then teams are going to continue to do it. When I go watch junior high games, all I see is bare front all the time. All right, center's covered. Both guards covered. When I go to junior high games, I see it all the time, and guys never make adjustments. And what ends up happening is teams run – the ball into numbers in the box that you really shouldn't uh, run it into. All right, and we do it at the high school level sometimes. We're an RPO team. We're a team that quarterback has to get us in and out of certain things. If he doesn't account for the bo for the box right, excuse me, there's times where we run plays into some guys that we probably can't block. So I'm going to show you ways that you can handle the bare front. All right, for us in two back spread, twins open ways that you can handle the bare front. First way is you got to be able to unchain one of them. All right, so when I say unchain, that means leave one of them unblocked, all right, and not read one, unchain one. It's normally going to be the furthest guy away from the play, all right? One of the first ways you would do that is if you were a wide zone team, all right, so if you were a wide zone team and you were trying to, all right, run a wide zone theory, all right, you would, with your sniffer in the game, you now have a player to account for that Mike linebacker, so your center's point would actually be the will and you would probably try and get it worked where you get that cut off so the center can climb, get that cut off. Your landmark for your outside, your wide zone stuff would be an imaginary tight end, so you're trying to push that landmark there, and then you have a search tree or a front side linebacker or whatever terminology you want to use. You have a sniffer that, based on how it occurs, can handle the mic, and now you are going to unchain the jack and run away from the jack because... Your aiming point, all right, is that ghost tight end. So you're running away from the jack, and then you're going to control him. All right, you're going to control him with the naked boot passing game. All right, so they have seven helmets in the box. You can only box six of them if you don't read one. One of the ways you can handle that is by running wide zone schemes, okay, wide zone schemes to where uh, you can get um, – Six of those guys blocked because you have a sniffer. The combination is probably going to occur, depending on how good your guys are, the combination will probably occur with the center and the backside guard. All right? Or if your backside guard is good enough and you think you can get the nose cut off, combination may occur with the center and the front side three technique, but more often than not, it's going to be a lock situation. Lock situation, those two guys are going to be on their own. They've got to get that heavy hook it backside hand to make sure that guy can't cross their face. And then these two are going to be working their little A game here working to that backside will, all right, because they know that the sniffer can get to the front side mic. You could also, all right, any of you guys that are wide zone guys know that for a long time, wide zone week was one of the best plays in football and in, in, in the NFL game. So if you know that they're always spinning down to your receiver strong, you could very easily come back and run your wide zone week, and now you would be, all right, trying to get that helmet outside of jack if possible, outside of three if possible, work your game here, all right. This would now be declared to Mike even though he's the will and your sniffer would be on him. However, he can get through the window to fit. You'd work your A game here to cut off the backside, cut off the three, get your landmark to where it belongs, and you would now unchain 
the Sam linebacker and control him with the naked boot. Okay, so great thing about the wide zone is depending on how they play the bare front with those outside guys, if this guy doesn't want to get reached in when that tackle, all right, goes to stretch that guy, goes to get his helmet to his outside armpit, when that guy decides he doesn't want to be reached, we run his ass to the sideline, all right, and now your sniffer can now insert underneath that or underneath the three technique based on how the three technique is playing. So the wide zone is a counter to itself when you have good kids and good coaches that understand how to run it, and then you control it with the naked bootleg passing game coming back. All right, so wide zone is one of the ways to handle bare front. You can read one of these guys now. All right, and there's a couple different ways to do it if you are a inside zone team. Or, all right, so it's a little bit more difficult at times, but it's definitely possible if it's something that you carry in your scheme. Okay, if you are a if you are an inside zone team, what you can do is you can run your tight zone all right, scheme here. Read your backside jack and then take your sniffer and make him a cruise player. All right, that's going to come back here and if the jack is up the field wide, your sniffer all right, is going to look to handle all right, the will linebacker on the backside, so it becomes like a zone lock insert, but you have to read a guy because you're short a number. So you're going to try and get this play to actually, all right, any of you that watch like Alex Gibbs stuff or you watch, you know, any wide zone, inside tight zone, Alex Gibbs always talks about on a, the tight zone play, even though your landmarks are over here, the entry point, and, and actually he teaches a lot of his guys, and it's the backside guys that are actually point of attack because his philosophy is the white, the tight zone always ends up going back behind the center, so it end up, always ends up somewhere on the backside. So this for us would be more of a zone insert type scheme to where we're taking this uh, fullback here, and because we have an extra guy, we're going to call him a cruiser to where we're going to take him backside and he's going to read the jack. All right, if the jack is up the field, he is going to insert himself on the wheel, and now the tailback can wind back behind all right, the insert of the jet. If the jack happens to be a wrong arm squeeze player, so if they're a gap exchange team and the jack happens to be a wrong arm squeeze player, your cruiser, sniffer, whatever you want to call him, is now going to go here and bypass that and arc for the will, and your quarterback will pull the ball because you're reading a guy. So you're reading that jack linebacker, but you're not only reading him with the quarterback, you're reading him with the sniffer. Because if you just run base zone read and you don't do something with the sniffer on the back side of the play, okay, if you run base zone read and the jack is an upfield player forcing the quarterback to give the ball, you're never going to get to that will linebacker. All right, they have seven, you have six. How do you get the six guy involved? You got to get that sniffer. You got to get that cruiser back, whatever you want to call him. You got to get him involved somewhere. However, you choose to involve him, and then you got to read a guy. So, in his own read theory, all right, or in the veer read theory, what you can do, and this takes a little bit of work, but if you know you're going to see a lot of bear, it's worth it. What you can do is you can bring the cruiser back and say, okay, look, that kid's up the field, the ball's going to be given. You're going to turn up and get the will. Okay? If the ball. If the ball, if that jack is a squeeze player, you're going to go around and bluff him and go out to get the will because they're gap exchanging. Now, the only thing you got to worry about is that sniffer has to get his eyes on potential run through from the will, all right, in the A gap. Because if you get the jack sitting, making it a give, you go to read the jack, you go to cut off the three, and he works with that, and this guy runs through, you got yourself an issue. So technically, he's got to be aware if he gets will run through, he's got to turn up and block that. All right, so he's essentially locked on the will linebacker, however you want to look at it. We're inserting him on the will linebacker, but what we're doing is we're just letting him know that it's either going to be an insert under the jack or it's going to be a bluff around the jack, but either way, you are responsible for the will linebacker. So this way, when we do that and we let him know he's responsible for the will linebacker, if he gets an A plug, he just blocks the A plug right now, and we're hoping that with the A plug, the jack stays wide, the ball gets given, and we have enough helmets. Okay? You could screw around and, and run like a midline scheme off of outside zone. All right, I've seen some teams that have been able to do this type of deal, depending on how good your old linemen are, how bad 
their players are, which is always the deal in football. All these videos are great. At the end of the day, what it really comes down to, I have a philosophy that um, I live by in high school football, and I tell all my friends about it, and some people like it, some people don't, but a lot of times high school football comes down to who sucks less. So a lot of times you may not execute very well, you may not be a great high school football team, but if you suck less than the other team does at the execution, you may end up winning that game. So I've talked to a lot of coaches around that are 6-1, and 7-0, and and they hate the way they play. And I say, well, coach, how are you 7-0 and if you hate the way you play? Well, we just happen to be better than the teams we're playing that night. And it's a good point, and it's a relevant point. And, you know, I love the game of high school football. I love coaching high school football players. But at the end of the day, truth be told, sometimes it becomes a game of who is not who is better. It's actually who is not as bad. All right, which technically I know makes you a better team, but you talk to guys that are six and one, seven and zero, and you go, man, we just we don't block things right, we don't execute, we don't fit runs, we don't. You know, coach, you're seven and zero. Well, yeah, the teams we're playing are worse than we are. So it's out there. It's a factual statement. Sometimes you just gotta suck a little bit less than the team you're playing. So you'll get some situations where you'll try and base reach this. You'll put your your guard up on the mic right now. All right, and then uh, I'm sorry. Double, we would double for leverage, the nose back to the wheel. We would block out on the three, out on the five. We would try and sneak the full back up. We would go stretch. Hopefully we can get the corner with this base block. Or if we can't reach that, hopefully our back is good enough to get the edge. And we're going to read this three technique. If he squeezes, we give the ball. If he's up the field, the quarterback pulls and runs ISO. All right, behind, uh, behind the fullback, which is kind of a bastardized version of an old, old midline theory. But the case in point I'm trying to get at is if they have seven and we have six, we have to unchain one or we have to read one, right? So first thing you do is unchain it. Second thing you do is figure out a way to read it. Third thing you do is figure out a way to add a helmet. Now, we do not play with tight ends. It's not in our game plan. We don't have one. We don't coach one. Now, this year I currently have one or two kids that I think could do it. They'd be two-way players because they're both defensive players. So this year I think we could have did it. I think it's very possible, all right, but we choose, all right, not to. Uh, so in our game plan, when we play without a tight end, when we want to add a helmet, we have to do it in some type of direct snap package or make my quarterback a ball carrier. So now that when we go, all right, any type of gap scheme or any type of, you know, Inverted veer scheme, however you want to look at it for us, it's our front side veer. But if we're back, back, double, down, kick, lead with a direct snap to the tailback, all right, now we've got a version of a down, down, kick play with an insert from a tailback, and now we've equated seven on seven. All right, so we'll take, uh, you know, just a, a standard formation that we use all the time. If our quarterback's healthy, we'll do it with him. We'll put bigger backs in and snap it to them. All right, and we'll go to uh, a situation where we got seven helmets and now we run our down gap scheme with a kick and a lead. So now we can get seven helmets on seven helmets. We also do it. Um, we also do it out of a double sniffer look so that you can't always tell or set people to where. I know at a bare front you're not really going to set it, but we do this for some other reasons. All right, but now you get a bare front there, and we got double sniffer. So if we went with our gap scheme, direct snap, all right, we've got down. If we're going to double that, back there, back there, kick that, wrap that, all right, and run right there. Okay, so you got to choose whether you want to double the nose or double the three technique and leave the center on the nose by himself. You're always going to block back on the three and the five. Okay, so we run nose schemes to get an extra helmet, get an extra person involved. You could get, all right, a lot of people that are power teams, you could get, an extra guy in there, if you could cut off the three, you could unchain this one and get another puller in there if you're pulling all right, the guard with it. When we choose to run a lot of our extra sniffer set stuff, we choose to run gap schemes and we make the sniffer the pulling guard. We don't run it with the sniffer and the pulling guard, although we do have some things that we run where we pull the guard and add a blocker to get an extra helmet. So I'm not going to lie to you and say we don't do that. We don't do it a lot. When we go to our two back or two sniffer direct snap stuff, it's mostly down block, gap schemes, kick out, wrap, try and get seven on seven 
And then depending on how tight the techniques play, we'll always have versions of these plays that can now become seal, kind of pin and pull in a way, seal out around the corner to get the edge when teams start really pressing the box tighter. All right, but if you're going to coach high school or junior high or pop water football, you're going to see a bunch of bare front. If you're going to be a twins open, 20 personnel or a one back team like we are a lot of the time, you don't play with a lot of tight ends. All right, and you have to understand how you can handle that. The ways you handle that is you can unchain one all the way back, furthest back with, all right, I showed you with wide zone, or you could possibly do it with a power play, uh, depending on how fast you think a power play can hit. If you can hinge and unchain the backside, uh, you might be able to, um, sorry, do it with a read scheme where you read one of them. It could be a zone read, it could be power read on the backside. You could run power front side, hinge the three technique, read that jack on the backside. All right, depending on where the entry point of your power is and if you like more of a horizontal entry point than a vertical entry point, you can run the zone read that I described with the cruiser back, go in and lock it on the wheel linebacker. Either he goes under the jack or bluffs around the jack. Midline that I drew up, possible scenario. Or you got an add a helmet for us. When we add a helmet, it's an extra sniffer, direct snap to a tailback unless my quarterback is healthy and he's a good runner, then I'll just direct snap it to him. Best of both worlds because he can throw the ball as well. All right, so hopefully that helps you guys uh, understand how to do some things to handle the bare front, how they're getting an extra guy at seven on six in the box, and how we need to equate that and some things you need to do to be able to handle that. Make sure you guys uh, check out all our sponsors. Make sure you click the subscribe button, click the notification so that you know uh, when we every time we do a video, you get notified. Click the like or dislike button. Make sure you comment. I answer every comment, or I try to answer every comment, good or bad, positive or negative, that is on the channel in the community, I try and get back and answer every one. Make sure you check out our uh, website, www.playfastfbclinic.com, for our information on hotel information, registration information, vendor information if you're interested in being a vendor, who the speakers are, um, when the clinic is, January 24, 25th, 26, 2020, St. Augustine Beach, Embassy Suites, right on the ocean. So make sure you go to that website, www.playfastfbclinic.com. Dot com to make sure you get all the information on the first ever PlayFest football clinic. Hope this video helps. Hope you guys are uh, having a successful season. We are getting ready to play our district championship game this week against the team that leads the area in offense, leads the area in rushing. They run for 350 yards a game. And the last four or five times I've played them, they have beaten me. So I haven't had a lot of luck beating them the last four or five years. Playing them for a district title. I'm excited. Great offense to try and stop. Great team to play against. Good coaching staff, uh, like I said, have won up to me the last couple years, so it's exciting. It's going to be a good environment. Hopefully you guys are having success with your season, so whatever it is coming down to the end, I wish you success. If you're not having success, I hope you turn it around or find something to turn it around, and if you really need to turn it around, come check us out at the clinic and get some ideas for the offseason. All right? Appreciate everything you guys do. Remember, you won't play well until you play fast. See you next time.